island of Tortuga, which means turtle in Spanish because of its appearance from the sea, lies off the northwest coast of Hispaniola. Just 23 miles long, Tortuga has a natural harbor on its southern side that is protected by a reef. Early on, the Spanish has established a small fort on Tortuga and expelled a handful of French and English settlers. Spain's motive was to prevent the other European powers from establishing a foothold in the Caribbean. Afterwards, seeing little value on the island, the Spanish moved to Hispaniola to expel the French and English there. I want to thank today's sponsor, Gaia Industries. Gaia manufactures everyday items out of bamboo instead of plastic and hopes to create a community that wants to help the planet in any small way possible. Gaia makes products like hairbrushes, combs, straws, toothbrushes, and even a water bottle with a built-in tea infuser. Go check their website out and see what you think. You can use the discount code PIRATESPORT for 25% off your order, and to my Patreon subscribers, you guys get an additional 10% off. Your code is in a private Patreon post. I should first explain the French and English who were living on Tortuga were adventurers that, for whatever reason, decided to try their hand at life in the New World. These men hunted wild boars and cattle, and using a practice taught to them by the Native Americans, smoked the meat on wooden racks called boucans. These hunters were nicknamed Boucanier, which eventually changed into Buccaneer. These hunters were constantly harassed by the Spanish, and as a result, the Buccaneers wanted revenge. To get it, they would occasionally form groups and raid Spanish ships and settlements. In 1630, the French returned to Tortuga, took over the abandoned fortifications, and expanded them. The French and English both set up colonies in the island and allowed the Buccaneers to base on Tortuga. The colonies started to import slaves in 1633, but by 1635, the practice had ended, as it was reported the slaves had become out of control and had likely joined up with the Buccaneers. Later that year, the Spanish invaded and expelled the French and English, but once again they returned to Hispaniola shortly after. The French, English, and a small group of Dutch settlers again settled on Tortuga, and two years later, in 1638, the Spanish returned to drive them off for a third time. This time, the Spanish remained on Tortuga up until 1640, when a raiding party of roughly 150 French, English, and Dutch colonists attacked and drove the Spanish off the island. Jean Levasseur, a French engineer, had a fort constructed around a steep 30-foot rock overlooking the harbor and named it Fort de Rachi. Levasseur had trenches dug into the steep hill surrounding the fort, which also had a natural spring. Fort de Rachi had 24 guns, and after Levasseur had the trees cut down, the fort had a perfect view overlooking the harbor. Levasseur built a citadel on top of the giant rock the fortress was built around and named it Duvacut. Duvacut acted as a storeroom for food and weapons, as well as Levasseur's home. To reach it, one had to climb halfway up a staircase carved into the rock itself and then climb a ladder that was lowered down from the top. Legend says that Lavasser would imprison his enemies in the Duvacut and, with command of the fort, became governor of Tortuga. Tortuga, now being relatively secure, started to attract more Frenchmen, who settled more on the island. Lavasser also invited the buccaneers, now referring to themselves as the Brethren of the Coast, to anchor in the harbor in exchange for a percentage of their plunder. Shortly after the fort was finished, the Spanish sent an invasion force from Santo Domingo to retake Tortuga once again. They didn't know of the fort, and upon sailing into the harbor, one of their ships was sunk and the rest fled. A group of Spanish soldiers that had managed to land on the beach marched towards the fort but were ambushed. The buccaneers had a practice called matelotage, French for seamanship, in which two men would make a legally binding contract to live together, share goods and wealth, survivor benefits if one man died, and so on. There has been speculation that this practice was akin to same-sex marriage, but there really is no proof of that one way or the other. Around 1645, Levasseur imported several hundred prostitutes, and in some cases these prostitutes married buccaneers. Unfortunately for the women, or maybe not depending on her tastes, the men practicing matelotage shared everything with the other, including their wives. The Brethren of the Coast were also causing chaos with shipping and didn't care much as to who they were attacking, but by and large protected Tortuga along with the fort. In 1653, Levasseur ran afoul of his men by stealing away a lieutenant's mistress and abusing her. The lieutenant, along with a friend, lured Levasseur out of the fort to inspect a warehouse, where the lieutenant first shot him with a musket before the two men stabbed him to death with daggers. The next year, the Spanish returned to attack yet again, and this time, knowing the fort's strengths and weaknesses, had a plan. The Spanish landed 700 troops several miles down the coast from the fort and marched inland, much like the buccaneers attacked their targets on land. The invasion force brought artillery, and on the night of February 12, 1653, a company of men managed to scale the cliffs and emplace the cannons. On February 20th, the French surrendered, and the Spanish captured 500 prisoners, 70 cannons, 
four ships, including one frigate, and eight small craft. Altogether, this was valued at approximately 160,000 pieces of eight, which is the equivalent of $8 million today. The Spanish burned the fort to the ground, and the prisoners were shipped away to become slaves on plantations on Hispaniola. In August, three buccaneer ships approached, but upon seeing the Spanish had established a garrison, they sailed off again. In September 1654, the Spanish governor recalled the troops from Tortuga in response to the English invasion of Hispaniola. The Spanish destroyed their fortifications and buried the artillery before leaving. In 1655, Tortuga was captured again, this time by the Englishman Elias Watts. Watts was sent on behalf of the English military governor on newly captured Jamaica. Between 1655 and 1659, the British tried to colonize Tortuga, but were unable. In 1660, the French once again reclaimed the island. By 1670, the time of the buccaneer was almost over, but a Welshman named Henry Morgan invited the remaining buccaneers in Tortuga to sail under him out of Port Royal, Jamaica. I hope you all enjoyed this week's episode. If you did, please like the video, subscribe, and leave a comment below. I want to thank my Patreon top tier subscribers, 1660, Larry W., and Patrick Chamberlain. If you can help out on Patreon or with a direct donation via PayPal, the links are below.